All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Foster King Power. <laughs> Tonight I'm out in the shop. I've got a Polaris 90 Sportsman four-wheeler in here. It's hard to start. I don't know what's going on with it. I know it's some kind of a two-stroke where it injects the oil in as it goes into the carb. It's a little different. Um, most two-strokes, you just pour some, some mixed gas in there and it pulls it straight through from the fuel tank. This one, like I say, is a little bit different. But I uh, ordered this carb online put it on there we've rode it a little bit here and there but it's just not it doesn't consistently start every time then you end up running the battery dead it is electric start so we have to break out the charger have to get out the jump pack whatever so I'm going to pull the carb off and see if maybe there's some trash in there I just got done draining all the fuel out of it um, that's why you see this fuel filter hooked to the hose with a big long braided line that goes all the way to the floor I was pouring it into a drain pan it was full actually so uh like i say i'm gonna drain this out and i may even put some two-stroke fuel in it just to kind of see what it does see if it starts better see if it runs better i don't know if the oil injection system is working properly um but yeah so i'm gonna jump in and take this carb off real quick and then i'll move the camera over to the workbench where we are gonna take it apart and see if there's anything in it Gonna bounce out of there. So there's the throttle cable, and there's our carb. All right, I'll move it over to the workbench now. All right, guys. So got the carb off. And I'm just gonna take these four screws out of the bottom of it to take a look inside the bolt. See if maybe there's some trash down there. Yeah, there's a little bit of trash in there already. See all the little flakes right down below where my finger's at? There's some over on that side too, which means possibly they got into the jets and whatnot. So we're gonna clean this thing out and uh, see what we can't do to get it back going again. So we got the bowl off. We showed you the trash that was in there. I'm just gonna spray it with a little carb cleaner. All right, we were able to get that bowl cleaned out really nice. So there's no trash floating down the bottom. So what happens is the trash will get in there and then whenever your engine makes the intake stroke or the suction it will pull the trash up into the carb and then into the motor which is not good most of the time it can't even make it into the motor because it ends up clogging up the jets on the carburetor and i'm going to take those out now you've got two jets on these small carburetors you've got a main jet and then you have a pilot jet the pilot jet is for idle and start up the main jet is your flow jet for whenever you are at cruising speeds so what you have here this larger one is your main jet this little small one is your pilot jet because it only wants to pull in a very small amount of fuel to sit at idle but whenever you're cruising around at half throttle three quarter throttle or even full throttle you want more fuel because you're getting more air so like i say we're going to spray these out 
they look to be clean looking up into the light but we're still gonna spray them out just to be sure that spread out I'm going to drop it back in I'm not gonna screw it in yet it's cleaned out so I'll sit that back on there and then this we will do a carb rebuild video I'm sure in the future probably the very near future this being a revival channel carburetor is usually the culprit of why it won't start but this is a new carb so there is not much point in tearing it completely apart and going through everything so when you take the bowl off and you're looking at the bottom of your carb the larger jet is right here the pilot jet is down in this hole right here and you can see it kind of down in there number one thing whenever you take the bowl off make sure that this gasket either stays with the carb or it stays with the bowl some of them have a recess on the bowl instead of the body of the carburetor this one has it on the body of the carburetor sometimes it'll be with the bowl just make sure it's not stuck to stuck in two different places where it would be stuck to part of the carburetor and part of the bowl. And then you go to pop this bowl off and it tears your either O-ring or gasket. So just a quick little tip there. Um, I am going to go ahead and slap the bowl back on. I have sprayed through most all the orifices on here now. Just like that. And then I will pop the five screws back in it this right here is the factory electric choke whenever i got it and the old car was so gummed up that i just decided to order a new one it has the option for a manual choke right here I do not have one. I may end up getting one because that could be the issue with it not wanting to start is there's not really a good way to choke it. Usually I just stick my hand under there, cover up the little hole. So the way this goes on is this mounts to the intake on the carb, this side does, and then the air box fits on right there. And then this little hole here is your inlet for your air. It comes in and there's a foam filter in here. A lot of times what I'll do is just stick my hand under there. Let me set this down. I'll stick my hand underneath and just kind of cover that hole up to choke it, allowing it to not suck air and suck mostly fuel to get it started. I'm kind of getting tired of doing that, so I will probably end up ordering a manual choke. This carp has one. We just don't use it. So there's just nothing hooked up to it. This is where the choke is. It's inside here. So like I say, I'm going to stop the camera there. We're going to slap this thing back on there. All we have to do is hook up the fuel, hook up the throttle cable, and hook up the oil injection right here. And you've got your idle adjustment screw here. And then right here, you have your air fuel mixture screw. So you can kind of adjust that and play around with that until you've got it to where it idles the way you want it to. So like I say, we're going to slap this back on there. Now, whenever you put these throttle slides in, it's not like a mini bike or a go-kart. It has to go a certain way. There's a long notch and then a very short notch. And if you look down inside your carb, you will see, let's see if I can get the right angle here. So if you notice, sorry, I'm trying to hold two screws in my hand along with the screwdriver. If you'll notice this little thing right here sits up against that lower notch and then you've got these two guides right here that that long notch has to slide through. So with that being said, we're going to line it up and slide it down in there. I'm going to Slide 
got it going like that. And the O line goes back in here. It slides on there. And the last thing to do there before we tighten it down is just slide your fuel line on there. Let's let this air box on and get back to it. And what I was talking about earlier as far as choking it, I literally just stick my hand in here and cover that little hole. As you can tell, the fuel is extremely dark. That's because I put some two-stroke in it first and it's some 50 to one, so it's some pretty stout stuff. I just did that so that it would kind of lubricate as it did its initial start. Again, I drained all the fuel out of it already. So the tank was completely empty. The car was in completely empty. Make sure my fuel is on. Let it flow down there to it. I'm going to dig up here on the box for my keys to it. So See what happens here there is a safety switch so you have to squeeze your brake in and set it which will also the way that you can tell that that safety switch is off is by noticing the tail light or the brake light is on so we've got brake set kill switch is in the on position key is on this is the starter that they added and did away with this one you can actually hear the starter relay still click whenever you push it so but i know it starts without that so let's give it a go and see what happens you can hear it crying so let's see what happens if i put my hand down here and choke it manually seen the intro to part two of the jeep revival the stricker jeep revival uh where i was riding it um like i say it would start every now and again ride far of the way sometimes it would sometimes it wouldn't so i think there was just some trash left in the fuel tank so drained all that out cleaned it out today um and took the carb off and that's what you guys got to see of that i didn't want to do a video of me draining out I don't know how big this fuel tank is, however big this is. There was seven quarts in there, so almost two gallons of fuel. Um, but like I say, I will start it back up real quick, and then uh, the next part of the video you'll see is uh, us cruising around on this thing. It is incredibly fun uh, to be a little 90 and have no gears and just be able to bump the throttle and go. It's got a kick start. It's an electric start. There's no rope pulling, no nothing i mean it's 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 got decent brakes on it um it's got dual brakes up here and then i got i think it's got a single back there in the back um the front brakes don't work great but the rear brakes do just fine um but yeah i mean it's a, it's a fun little fun little recovery vehicle if we were to get stranded on something else you know you can you can haul a person back on this thing it, it carries the weight no problem um but yeah like i say Next part of this video you'll see is us riding it. So like, comment, subscribe, share, tell all your friends, tell all your family members, tell your dead relatives. Mm -hmm.